My name is Christopher Statham. I'm currently a second year student on the Masters in Counselling programme at Bangor University, and I'm here to present my research study to you, named Drawing Out Self-Compassion, the Impacts of Art Activities on Trainee Counsellors' Self-Compassion Levels. So let's begin with asking what is self-compassion? Well, compassion is common in counselling, which is a basic kindness and awareness of others' suffering and holding a desire to help them through their troubles. But we often neglect having the same compassion for ourselves. Where to develop genuine compassion for others, we need to develop we have we need to connect to our own feelings and take care of our own welfare. This is the main premise for self-compassion. Kristin Neff describes three components of self-compassion: self-kindness, the ability to be gentle and understanding of personal emotions, common humanity, being an understanding that failure is a part of human experience, which allows a wider perspective of our own shortcomings and mindfulness, being aware of our present feelings and experiencing these without avoiding or over-identifying with them. Now, practicing self-compassion has been shown to improve psychological functioning through increased feelings of connectedness, emotional intelligence, and greater capacity to employ adaptive coping strategies. And past research has also highlighted decreased levels of anxiety and depression in those with higher self-compassion, along with decreased fears of failure and rumination. This reflects the need to promote self-compassion to maintain psychological well-being. So why should self-compassion be included in educational settings? Students face a range of challenges while studying, including balancing work-life demands, financial concerns, and managing new academic challenges, which can cause intense stress while studying. But this is especially true for trainee counsellors, where they experience these challenges, but are also faced with intense emotions from clients, which are focused around human suffering. This is what Figley calls a cost of caring, where being compassionate takes a toll on personal health, reducing capacity to bear others' suffering. And this shows the importance of developing strategies to maintain self-compassion for trainee counsellors, to sustain compassion for clients and their own well-being. If left unmanaged, counselling trainees risk experiencing exhaustion, stress and burnout. However, it can be difficult to place self-compassion practices into counselling programmes and few programmes do so because of high costs and limited space to practice self-care. So it's important to find a space that will both benefit the programme and a suitable environment to practice self-care. A possibility for a suitable environment is through personal and professional development sessions, known as PPD, which is defined by the BACP as a core component of counselling training. PPD focuses on promoting student self-knowledge, self-acceptance and personal growth which means it holds similar values to self-compassion. Studies have found some students find PPD environments uncomfortable, however, and can invoke anxiety due to the focus on verbal disclosures around sensitive topics, which may make students feel vulnerable due to associations with self-compassion and empathy for others, perspective taking and less personal distress. Implementing self-compassion practices within PPD may alleviate these anxieties and form a stronger relationship with others through more willingness to be open and share vulnerability. So this may help students understand the wider importance of practicing self-compassion, but also improve interaction within PPD, within PPD environments. To do this, a cheap and timely method is needed to embed into the programmes. And this is where expressive arts come into play. So the expressive arts refer to exploring our inner realm to discover feelings and to express them visually through drawing, movement, drama or even sound. The arts have been found to help individuals connect with their feelings and allow emotional expression unaccessible to the constraints of spoken language. Therefore, they are argued to be suitable to deepen the acquisition of skills associated with self-compassion. Now, Howard and Perryman's recent study on art-based practices have found improvements in elements of self-compassion, especially in counselling trainees. By placing five separate activities into weekly classes, into weekly classes, including mandalas, sand tray figures, amongst others, research found that students were able to naturally connect to each other. They mentioned greater insight into their personal identities through visual representations, and their emotional reactions came more easily. So this study is interested in two activities in particular. The first being take a line for a walk. This is a scribbling activity, which involves drawing a single free flowing line with no planned outcome. After scribbling, spend some time reflecting on what's in front of you. 
look deeper into the picture to see any apparent images and highlight them. This, according to Kane, helps individuals identify unconscious thought by exploring the symbolic representations within the scribbles. Studies have also found anxiety reduction from scribble activities and have been seen as a strong introductory activity for people who may be hesitant to engage in art um, by letting go of perfection and by focusing on the process of creating rather than the final product. The other activity is mandala creating. The term mandala refers to con contacting individuals into their center. By drawing in their center, people, can people should focus on their present thoughts and withdraw into themselves to focus on the act of drawing itself. The use of mandalas have been found to increase objective well-being in college students, enhance self-awareness and improve self-competence among helping professionals. So, the purpose of this research is to explore the impacts of providing space and counselling programmes to engage in art-based activities, to examine students' changes in self-compassion. This is done by examining the two activities, take a line for a walk and mandala creating through a four week intervention. For this, this study proposed two hypotheses. Firstly, after engaging in art-based expressive activities over two weeks, self-compassion levels were significantly increased. And secondly, participants who engage in art-based activities will reflect higher increases in self-compassion scores compared to the controlled group. So, on to the methods. As this study focused on the impacts of trainee counsellors, all participants were first year students from the Masters of Counselling course at Bangor University. Purposive sampling was used for this study, as all participants were trainee counsellors and were already expected to engage in um, PPD sessions. So while it, engagement in PPD was a compulsory requirement within the syllabus, students were invited to participate in the research element of this study. Also, for effort for ethical approval, the study had been approved by Bangui University's Research Ethics and Governance Committee. So to understand these impacts, participants were divided into two groups. Group one, who engaged in the art activity for the first two weeks, and group two, who engaged in the art activity in the final two weeks. When either group was not in the intervention, they engaged in typical PPD sessions, acting as a control condition to assess the changes compared to the art intervention. A diagram is presented in the handout to show this intervention process. So, before each activity, a variety of art, of art and materials were placed on a large table for participants to sit around, along with an instruction sheet of the associated art activity. The first one being take a line for a walk, and the second one being the mandala creation. After 20 minutes passed, five minutes of silent reflection proceeded where participants were encouraged to focus on the thoughts and feelings evoked during the activity, and then encouraged to share them verbally with the class if they felt comfortable to. Afterward, participants were emailed a questionnaire containing Neff's self-compassion scale to complete before the next session. So this was a mixed measured design study with one dependent variable and two independent variables. The first independent variable was time through a pre-intervention questionnaire and post-intervention questionnaire. And then the second independent variable was group allocation, where intervention and control groups were compared. Neff's self-compassion scale in the short form formed a dependent variable to provide objective measures of self-compassion. Now onto our results. As researchers wanted to examine the difference in self-compassion scores from pre- and post-intervention questionnaires, Participants who didn't complete both questionnaires in either intervention were excluded from analysis. So for the first analysis, participants had to complete questionnaires one and two. And then for the second part of analysis, participants had to complete questionnaires two and three. Out of this, 28 participants were excluded from analysis, leaving a total of 31 samples. 31 in the first analysis and then 15 for the second. So. This is the first analysis, and the graph here shows the two groups after the first intervention, the blue being the intervention group, and then the orange being the control group. This shows that after two weeks of our activities, the intervention group showed increases in self-compassion scores from 2.53 to 2.78, whereas the control group reflected a minor decrease from 2.95 to 2.91. However, no significant difference was found in mean scores between the intervention or the control groups. 
Also, although there was an increase in the intervention group and a decrease in the control, when examining the changes between questionnaires, no significant differences were found, suggesting that mean questionnaire scores reflected similar variances and the difference may be closer to um, a reason of chance instead. Now, as you can see from the graph, as the two scores do not follow a similar trajectory, an interaction may be occurring. However, the interaction effect, once, um, once checked, did not reach significance. However, the second part of the intervention showed rather different results. This graph reflects that the intervention group showed minor increases in self-compassion scores from 3.02 to 3.14, whereas the control group showed a much greater increase from 2.99 to 3.71. In this intervention, significant increase, uh, differences in mean self-compassion scores from pre to post intervention were found at the 0.02 level. However, the conditions between groups did not, did not differ significantly. And then finally, an interaction effect was not found to be significant. Additionally, nine participants also completed an open question asking about their views and experiences of the art activities at the end of the intervention. The main findings from these responses represent other focus as the art activities drew attention away from normal PPD. While some found this a positive experience, allowing greater participants due to having less focus placed on them, others found it drew away from the main premise of PPD. And then other participants mentioned how the activities facilitate reflection by creating a positive atmosphere and that allowed put more positive reflections to be made. Some found the activities grounding and then others mentioned that it was a relaxing experience. Um, due to time restraints, the, res the responses are available on the, highlight on the handout if you'd like to view them at another time. So let's go back to our proposed hypothesis. So for our first hypothesis, the first intervention showed no significant difference in self-compassion levels. And although the second intervention found significant differences in self-compassion between the stages of intervention, due to no interaction effect being found, the fire hypothesis is not supported. Regarding the second hypothesis, as neither of the interventions showed significant differences in self-compassion between groups, along with no significant interaction effect, this hypothesis cannot be supported either. This was a surprising result when reflecting on past literature. However, although our hypotheses were not supported, some interesting suggestions from the results can be made. These suggestions lie within the impact that our activities may have on engagement and relationship building within PPD environments. One interesting suggestion from this is the possibility that our activities to be used as a primer for PPD engagement. The reason for saying this is from the fact that the only decrease found in the intervention was when the second group, group two, had no engagement in the art intervention previously. Once all groups engaged, even after being placed in the control group, self-compassion continued to increase. Therefore, although there may be, may be other reasons for this impact, one reason may be from the reduced anxiety within PPD sessions through our engagement. As mentioned earlier, anxiety can be found to be a barrier to engagement in PPD for many students, from feeling vulnerable to disclosing sensitive information. And as anxiety has been found to decrease after engaging in our activities, there may be grounds to suggest that the intervention helped lower anxious feelings and therefore encourage greater participation in PPD sessions. This may account for the consistent increase in self-compassion, along with the significant increases found after both groups engaged in the art intervention. This, is further, this could be supported by the feedback obtained from participants who mentioned decreased feelings of performance pressure and anxiety after engaging in art-based practices, particularly through the lack of attention focused upon them, therefore lowering their performance pressure. The second factor raised is relationship building. Now, Howard and Perryman highlighted how expressive arts can encourage emotional connection through a different way to process experience and when used with others, this can form an environment of shared empathy, genuineness and vulnerability. Therefore, through reduced feelings of anxiety and greater engagement in the sessions, a mutually empathic relationship may develop within the groups. In return, interpersonal connections may form, resulting in less vulnerability to disclose sensitive thoughts or experiences, resulting in deeper reflections in PPD. Reflecting again on the significant increases in self-compassion scores in the second intervention, along with 
along with responses focused on greater participation and feeling more relaxed. Expressive arts may be helpful in early PPD sessions to build connections within groups for future engagement by setting the stage for verbal disclosure and to utilise PPD sessions to the utmost. However, as we did not explore objective measures for anxiety or emotional connections within this study, and the, and the responses obtained only portrayed experiences of a small number of participants, this study does not make outright claims that our activities lowered anxiety in PPD, but it may warrant further exploration in future research. Now, there are some limitations that should be raised. First is the sample size. An, app an appropriate sample for quantitative research is approximately 60 participants. However, this study only obtained 31 valid responses for the first intervention. So a larger sample size would have been preferable for more generalizable data. However, as this study specifically wanted to explore trainee counselors' experiences in an environment embedded in the counseling programs, this population was precisely intended for research. The flexibility to complete questionnaires also risked external factors impacting on students' self-compassion scores, as participants had a week to submit responses. A way to limit this may be to include the questionnaire within the PPD sessions. However, researchers thought this may be inappropriate, as it may reduce the sense of choice to engage in the research process. And then finally, engaging in weekly activities for 20 minutes for two weeks is a relatively short period to assess changes in self-compassion. However, as the intervention was set in the counselling programme, researchers felt it was the maximum amount of time to ask students to commit to this study. So what about future research? First would be the research design. Due to the objective nature of quantitative studies, this project lacked a detailed, valid account of personal experience. As participant responses showed interesting and valuable perspective, Incorporating a mixed method approach in future may provide more valid and in-depth accounts of personal experience. And to widen our understanding of the impacts our activities can have on counselling trainees, including more measurements surrounding wellbeing may prove beneficial. For example, as anxiety, comfort and reflection were raised in participant responses, having measurements such as the anxiety symptoms questionnaire and the cognitive and effective mindfulness scale could provide greater understanding of changes of well-being in, in counselling students through the use of art based practices. And then eliminating the risk of external factors in future research is also important. A 24 hour window um, to, to complete questionnaires may reduce such risk as it accounts for self-compassion levels nearer to the time of intervention, while also avoiding the impacts of the real life setting by providing the flexibility and choice for participants to complete. To conclude, although the study did not find significant interactions between the art activity and increases in self-compassion amongst counselling trainees, we maintain that art activities may be beneficially used within PPD sessions. Responses surrounding individual experience of the interventions showed predominantly positive results in feeling more comfortable, less anxious and encouraged more participation and reflection. This may enhance the PPD environment by creating a mutually empathic relationship between the groups and making them feel less vulnerable, thus priming students for future engagement to motivate personal growth and development in training counsellors. However, future research is certainly required to validate these claims. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I thank you for listening and I will now be happy to answer any questions that you might have.